<laughs> oh, two high fives. <laughs> I was only prepared for one. Um, hi, my name is Claire Hemingusco. That's my co-founder, Martin, right there, sitting top and center. Um, we are 1.5. We are your partner, or the packaging industry's partner, for novel sustainable packaging solutions. I'm going to briefly take you through what we actually do today. Just a few headline facts for you. Who are we? Um, we are a startup that we founded in 2020. Um, we are around about 38 people today, have raised to date 10.5 million euros in venture capital from impact investors like Planet A, Green Generation Fund, and Revent, amongst others. There's a, a lot of people that are supporting us, which we're very grateful for. And our mission is to protect the planet by becoming the leading material solutions provider for the FMCG industry. So how are we doing that? I will get to it. But first of all, let me frame the problem. Single dose sachets is just one of the problems that we're trying to address, but this is the one that I'm going to use today because it gives you a particular insight into how big the problem can get, regardless of the fact that this is a teeny tiny sachet. 855 billion plastic sachets are sold every year. That's a number that Reuters gave us. Around about, if you're accounting for 60 grams per sachet, that's 51 0.3 million tons of plastic and aluminium that are produced yearly. Now, that's enough material to cover the entire surface of the Earth. Accounting for, I think it's a 20 to 30 percent um, leakage rate, that's 1.3 million garbage trucks per year that end up in our oceans, our waterways, our natural habitats, causing a huge amount of harm for not just us, but the, bio, the, the ecosystem as a whole. So, what are we going to do about it? Right now, the industry is struggling to solve this problem. Why? It's an incredibly complex problem to solve because you have global distribution networks, which means large CPG companies have an entire network that's meant to spread across the globe. But as we know in sustainability, it's a highly contextual problem. On top of that, sustainability is now also being regulated very, very stringently by the European Commission and other authorities. So you have an industry that is unable to meet the demands of a changing regulatory but also climate environment. And therefore, you have all these large industry players who are struggling and certainly are trying, but are really struggling to bring the right solution to the market and also are struggling to do it on time, right? Sustainability and climate tech is trying to solve the problem sooner because we just have no time. So, <clears throat> what are we doing? We are decoding packaging. Um, this looks a little bit complex. I'm going to take you through the whole thing. What we've done is we've decided to use software to help us solve the very, very first part of the, let's call it, product development process when we're talking about new packaging solutions. So what happens? We get a product brief from a customer, let's say Sachet Producer X. They usually put ketchup, co um, condiments, other condiments, shampoos, or other kind of liquid products in there. What we do with our algorithm is that we scan and take a look at all the different technologies that exist outside in the world, and we say, which one is going to be the one best suited to solving the actual problem? So we start with the problem. We don't start with the solution. What that means is that in the end, we have a let's say, a wide section of different technologies that all address maybe a certain functionality that needs to come together. Just to give you a little bit of technicality, ketchup, for example, requires a really high oxygen barrier because it can't oxidize. Because if it does, I don't know if any of you have looked under a ketchup lid before, it starts to cake over. It's not a very pleasant experience for you as an end consumer. So an oxygen barrier makes sure that the ketchup is protected for the life cycle or for the shelf life that um, the customer has, or ketchup producer X has sold the product to you for. What we then do is we add all of these different components together, and we go into the active development. Why do we need the software for this? Well, this is how we achieve our results faster, right? It means that we are trying to avoid the painful test and learn trials that usually um, test and learn cycles that can sometimes really elongate the product development process. We really only focus on the technologies that we are sure, or the system also is sure, are going to succeed at actually solving the problem. And then we go into active development. <clears throat> what does that look like? So <laughs> one of our final or one of our most recent um, products that we're going to be hopefully going into industrial production next year already is what I'm calling the Leakage Safe Single Deuce Cosmetic Sachet. I realized just before I came up here that leakage could also imply that the product doesn't leak, but actually I'm referring to plastic leakage here. So just to clarify that for those who might um, have caught on uh, to my little error. What we're doing is we've developed a technology that looks simple here, but actually it's a multi-layer system that allows for this sachet to safely degrade in the marine and the soil environment. Note, 
that the soil environment means that there's no added temperature, right? It means that if this solution were to end up on your park floor or even in the forest floor, it should degrade within the acceptable um, range of time. On top of that, we've also designed this to bring about an um, emission saving of around about 37% really depends on the end-of-life scenario. Again, there's only so much that we can control as a company. Um, and on top of that, this version 2... Sorry, I'm realizing I'm getting very nervous. <laughs> I have so much time. I'm going to take a little, little breather. OK. What we've also designed this for is improved circularity in version 2. This means right now, this material will not or has not been designed for paper circularity just yet. Right? There's only so many problems that we as a company can solve. However, version 2 will be geared to making sure that it is not only leakage safe, but it'll also safely go into the paper waste stream. We'll be able to recover the fibers so that some of those fibers can be used again for generation 2 of our product. Now, this is due to come out next year. Hopefully, if all goes well, Martin is nodding, we're going to do it. Um, and that also means that this will be one of the primary products that we will place with one of the largest CPG companies in the world. And hopefully, we'll be able to make our little let's say, dent in the very, very large problem that's been created so far. I'm going to wrap it up. Beautiful picture of our team, um, especially also because I want to make sure that anybody who has a new material, Novoloop is a super exciting technology. I'm going to find the founder and ask her if we can have a chat. If there's anybody else out here who thinks that their material can be a part of the overall system that we're putting together, please get in touch with Martin or myself, because we'd love to hear from you. So at the end of the day, it's going to take a lot more than just us to solve the problem that we have. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time. <laughs>